Oh, we're recording. We're going. We're, we're crank, going. We're cranking tape. We're doing it. We're here. Hello. Hello. How are you? You I'm, just got here. I just so. got here. I just got here. Welcome to Up to Date Cinephile. We are the Up to Date Cinephiles. That's Kyle. That's Kyle Brule. He does I Know Movies and You Don't. That's what he does I, a Patreon with more movies that he knows that you don't. <laughs> Subscribe to the Patreon. Yeah. My name's Ben Thielen. I do uh, the Dead Reckoner podcast. I do this. I'm an up-to-date cinephile, too. Now, thanks to Kyle. Yeah. Well, I mean, thanks to you, actually. You you. I did. I, 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 I push you. But, I mean, well, this had been sort of in the ether. Yeah. I know you you used to talk about current movies. Yeah. You may rue the day that you were once again brought in to talk about. Well, I mean, you know, it, it always depends on the movie, doesn't it? It like, does depend yeah. on the movie. Uh, today Today's not such a bad day. I don't think... Oh, I liked both these movies. I'm going to have positive I'm, reviews of both of these Well, movies. that's interesting. I have... I mean, I, I I don't dislike one of them, but I love one of them. Okay. So, uh, okay, well, I think I'm going to love the one you love a little bit less than you love it. That's probably true. And I'm going to like the one you kind of are okay yeah. with more than you like. Them. Yeah, probably. probably. So I think that's what I anticipate is ha- <laughs> going to happen. I, I, I you, suppose. Uh, enjoy this uh, cryptic discussion we're having. Yeah, it's vague. The party cryptic. of the first part. <laughs> that's no good. It's no good. You got to rip that out of the contract. <laughs> um, so we, <laughs> why don't we talk about King Richard? I guess first. That seems to be our way to talk about the more uh, the more popular. The more, I don't even know who can see Power of the Dog right now in a movie theater. Yeah, I mean Power of the Dog like, will be available on Netflix on December first. I so. saw it in one of the only uh, theaters that has a screening room so small that you feel like you might be not so much in a movie theater as in like a very rich person. Yeah, house. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I went and saw it at Lo- in Los Feliz. At the, in Los Feliz. Oh, uh, oh at the, the... At the three. The three? At yeah. the three, which is now... The big theater is now occupied by the American Cinematheque. Yes. And so the small theaters uh, run some movies. Yeah, I, that, I saw it at Landmark. Yeah. So it was the, more of a theater. It was actually it was the same theater we saw Tick, Tick, Boom in. It's, that's our spot, I guess. That's our, our spot. The exact same. Cinema 8, upstairs. Same seats. It was, same uh, food. Same, same, um, yeah, same food. Yeah, it was about the same. Katie got some candy. But uh, why candy don't we talk King, King Richard? Ronaldo Marcus Green is the filmmaker. He He's done only a couple of things. He's kind of, he's green, uh, you know. Oh, the, oh, so hey say. Oh. Uh, He's done, I, I want to say it was called Monsters and Men. Um, which sounds like a band, actually. Uh, yeah, that's but, good. I like that. I like but, their first album. Yes. Um, but it, but it, it, it was about the tumultuous relationship with cops and uh, the over oppressive nature of cops and their communities and uh, was trying to do a little more broad scope of it. I mean, one of the characters played by John David Washington, I believe, is a cop and is struggling with, you know, trying to maintain, a, you know, an I- idealist you know presence of what that means and then having kind of the protests happening yeah so that was kind of the emergence of this filmmaker and then he actually had a movie out this year that i did not see because i heard it was terrible it was called joe bell with mark Wahlberg and his uh it, it's oh, about oh, the true that's, story that's the one where him and matt damon did the same movie together where they played a redneck guy a redneck guy well it wasn't but, the same movie because matt damon went overseas right yes for, for his daughter for the, was in prison yeah because yeah. it was it was a ripoff of the woman who was yes was uh, over there yeah apparently not uh a court uh, she did not give approval of that yeah so they just line. did it anyways <laughs> Uh, what's her name? I always forget her name. I do forget. Uh, she, she's we've... the one who was arrested over, I think, Italy. Whatever. It doesn't matter. No. But they both like decided to go full redneck. Yeah. And yeah, Joe Bell was the one where he he has a... Uh, I, I saw the trailer. Yeah. yeah. The, he he his, has a son, son who was, I think is gay. He, his son was gay. Kills it, it's himself, based off a true story. And then he walks across the country. He does a Forrest Gump, but no running. He he walks. So. Yes. I, I, I did see that trailer and I did recall thinking... That I probably would not see that movie, and I was correct in predicting. Yeah, that was an accurate prediction. Yes, no, it, it, it did not look very good. Did not get very good ratings. At least I, I think that's what he did. I was reading up on him just earlier today. It's been a day. It's already been a day. So I'm like, you oh, know, do, you, do you want to share? We can just scrap the movies. You can just talk about <laughs> no, your feelings. no, no, no. Feelings, this feelings are nothing. No, this feelings are fucking intervention. My feelings don't matter. Uh, Leave some comments. <laughs> Leave a nice comment about Kyle. How he doesn't suck. 
<laughs> so King Richard smash the like. Yes, yeah. So yeah, if you like, if you smash the like, maybe I'll I'll brighten up a bit. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> I should have brought you coffee. I'm no, no, I'm good. I'm good. Um, Whiskey, we, maybe. We're like cleaning up. We're we're about to host for the holidays. So that's right. You know, There's no place time. like home for the holidays. Yeah, we can actually make like timely references on this show. As opposed to I know movies you know where the it gets released yeah. like five months later. Yeah, it is. I I do apologize to everyone for that. <laughs> I can't. I mean, I can't like the, talk about what happened. I literally like, today. can't. I li- I can't like record no, you're those. Good. In you're time, good. We you love know? you, Kyle. Yeah, Kyle. Yeah. Everyone loves you. Well, uh, we all love I to send Kyle some love, some good vibes. Uh, so the King Richard's about um, a Richard Williams who brought up uh, famously brought up to all-star i mean incredible athletes venus and serena williams and two of the i mean so we're talking about venus williams right who is a hall of fame tennis player all-time great and serena williams who may be the greatest athlete of all time i mean she's 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 she is on the top of the pantheon i mean yeah she she won 23 slams she uh dominated a sport for a very long time and that does not commonly dominated by one person for that no. long it's a d- displayed tremendous longevity pretty much the two of them pretty much revolutionized women's tennis brought it to a level of popularity that it had never seen before brought it into communities that had never been interested yeah the in diversity tennis. scope of it the implications uh, very yeah, important the, uh, ex- extremely important sports and cultural figures i think yes. it's safe to say well and so you know it, it, it this this is an approved biopic to focus on their father uh yep. you know i i feel like they have been in the limelight so much in their lives that it's nice to have it you know not necessarily be them the, the focus of a story yeah, I, was, I was reading a piece i want to say it was from some some dumb legacy media like time or something talking about how the movie does short shrift to them yeah. Because it's more about him. Well, first of all, his name is in the title. Yeah. Right? And second of all, I mean, yeah, like, what do, do we, do they want, do they want, like, a movie that would just rehash the things we already knew yeah. about which, how they, which they is, just came into it? Yeah. Because, I mean, the story of them as professional tennis players, I mean, there are interesting moments and moments of great drama, but, I mean, it's really, they're, they're professional stories about how they came in and whooped ass, right? I mean, they really just came in... I mean, for them to win thirty major tournaments, like that's just that's just a reign of dominance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And basically, a bunch of like, it was. I mean, they had the effect. Actually, I was surprised the movie didn't mention Tiger Woods because Tiger Woods is a pair. Like Tiger Woods happened yeah. at the same time as them with a similar storyline, right? A father who was a kind of ambiguous character, mm-hmm. but who had definitely driven the process of them becoming who they were. And who into a stuffy individual sport dominated by rich white people? Yeah, right. It, it's very similar, and and though they collectively sort of came into their sports and became the dominant forces in them, I mean Serena Williams and Tiger Woods are still the two most famous people in their sports. Yeah, yeah, like they're absolutely. the ones. They're the household names. They're the ones that could move units. Whatever you want to say, yeah. like they're they're still the biggest deal, uh, even in kind of you know the twilight of their careers or you know with tiger who, who really knows but like they're they're definitely past their primes i mean i don't think yeah. anyone would argue with that yeah. and they they remain the most popular and significant people in their respect absolutely sport. and and for good reason for good reason oh they, yeah i mean they they were they're great stories and the best right and the mean, best. what else do you want like, like, a, a wonderful combination that secures yeah. mythology i mean c- contrast that for instance with men's tennis right where you get someone like roger federer who is famous right and who a decent number of people know yeah. But who is dull as fucking dishwater, and you could not care less. About or, or then you get McEnroe. Who's... Yeah, well, yeah, but McEnroe is a better like Connors and McEnroe. I mean, obviously we're Americans, so we're kind yeah, of American, yeah. but they had personality, right? Yeah, yeah they certainly. And they had a kind do. of. And Connors was actually a working class guy, right? Came yeah. from like a working class background, not unlike McEnroe, right? And um, yes, had a certain appeal to a to a new audience, right? Yeah. But I mean, you know. Tiger even crazier, right? Because his mother was Asian. So, yeah. I mean, not only did he was he huge to the American black community, he also <laughs> was enormous in you know Asian Pacific, in East yeah. Asia, right? Which happens to have a shitload of people, yeah, absolutely, uh, who all of a sudden you know got interested in 
golf, right? Yeah. In a way they never had before. Well, in setting up the scene, and I think you did a good job of describing about breaking into a sport that is overabundance with privileged, white, rich uh, attitudes. It's hard to break through, especially if you come from an underprivileged community, especially if you come from a different cultural background. And so the story, I mean, obviously it's a incredibly inspirational story. It's an incredibly inspirational story to see people break through the mold, to defy expectation, especially the, the a lot of racist expectation, especially, and, and I think that's why this movie, and the, part of what I don't like about this movie, but part of that I understand, is that Green here is trying to over emphasize or overextend and uh, flip the narrative on its head from at the time uh, Richard Williams was in the media an eccentric a, a blowhard like he and they how they described him it could have a racial subtext that was inappropriate for its time and I feel like the intention behind this movie is to show an earnest disciplinary father who who's a lot and has his his foibles and his complications but love i think is is at the deep side of what his uh, motivation tool is and i feel like that's where the film sort of ventures on that side that's where they land to venture the love of this this father even though there's problematic elements to it like to the like to him or to the way he's treated or to the movie. No, the, the movie. I I think it's the problematic elements of the movie are that they almost over sanitize his his uh, faults to a little bit. Uh, I I think that there is a cleanup job on this. It almost goes into hagiography because of its tone, but because they I don't think they're curious to venture the really complicated insinuations of what what is going on in see this. i i see that this is that that's where we disagree i yeah. thought it was a very balanced portrait of him oh um, i i i don't, I, think, I do, I don't they think enter was, back and forth i mean they yes. brought up his his illegitimate children they, they do they brought i mean he in fact at the beginning like apparently they actually did have well I, we're still in the no spoilers uh portion of the review um so, so I think that's one place where we part company and why I like this movie a little bit better than you uh-huh. do, maybe, is that I thought it was a very, it was a much more balanced portrait of him yes. than I expected. Well, I mean, balance, I, and I think, like, again, I like I think to to I, to a sanitation, like a sanitized I mean, element, I mean, it is balanced. It's, it's hard to, but like, to me, the, the problematic thing about him is what's unavoidable, which is how hard he rode those girls, Yeah. right? Yeah. I, I mean, the other stuff, like, like, um, well, let me, I'll just lay my cards on the table. Like, I like Richard Williams. I like... I, I like things I like, about him, for sure. No, I like people like Richard Williams. Ah, okay. I like people... We don't mint interesting people anymore in this country. Mm-hmm. And I have a soft spot. This is just, this is not a moral judgment. And that's nope. part of the thing that I... Like, we, we, we constantly have to sort of make people heroes or villains, right? Yeah. yeah. Like... You know, we talked about, not on the podcast, but we talked about, personally, another biopic that came out, which is, like, more of a prestige movie, which is the Tammy Faye movie, which I think this movie is better than. Because, I would agree. Because yes. Tammy Faye, at the end of the day, is just a hero in that movie. And Jerry Falwell is the villain, and her husband is kind of the villain, but also kind of a patsy, right? Yeah. I mean, she's yeah. just a hero. She is unambiguously the hero. She gets in trouble... And eventually gets herself out of trouble. But, like, this guy, I mean, they they deal with head-on the fact that he was kind of a ridiculous, that he drove his daughters, that he acted in ways that were kind of erratic and seemed self-serving. I mean, the fact that he wrote a 78-page uh, manifesto, the, the plan really, the keeps plan. on coming it up, and people keep on being frustrated by it. I mean, I mean, the the thing it, and it may, maybe that's that's the interesting thing about the film, and maybe you can't separate this from the knowledge that what what ended up happening with Venus and Serena is that they did succeed. They, this did his plan oh, yeah. essentially worked, and so, but when for me, and it was interesting to watch the audience, they got mad at people who were like. 
you're ridiculous, Richard Williams. Oh, this see, is that's ridiculous. interesting. See, I watched it at home, uh-huh. so I didn't have that experience. It was in, it, it, it was interesting to see people I, see, I, I applaud thought... Richard Williams in in a way where I was like, well, I understand. There are some things he does that are I think are interesting. I think he is a thoroughly interesting man. I, I don't think he's a villain. I don't think he's um, a hero per se, but I think he is a complicated man and. But like, you're right, this movie does delve into some of those complications. Like, Richard Williams is an essentially American character, right? Absolutely. In the mold of P.T. Barnum, in the mold of someone who I think is a little bit forgotten by history, but I am fascinated with, Don King, right? Okay, yeah. And in the mold, probably, if we're being honest, of our last president, right? Yeah. This is an American, the carnival barker, the salesman... Like, this is an American type. Yes. Like, and I I like people like that. Not in a moral sense. I want to make this really clear. Yeah, I think any, that, anybody I think who that knows our, you, I don't think... I, but but, but we, we have... We're so fucking moralistic in this country. Yeah, that's true. And we constantly love... Like I said, in the Tammy Faye movie, Tammy Faye has to be a good guy at the end of the day. Right? That's the, the movie just... Ha- that's the way the movie is, and it's boring. Like, this guy is interesting, and given that it was made by Venus and Serena, and it was approved and all of that, yeah. um, and, he, and Richard Williams is still alive, although in ill health, um, I thought it was more of a warts and all movie than I expected. I think uh-huh. it's interesting that the crowd responded the way that you did, they did. Oh, um, it, was, it was very interesting. Because... Sitting alone, I watched it alone, right? Sitting in my living room, because you can see it on HBO Max. There's a little plug, you can get some HBO money in here. <laughs> uh, you, I, I thought that, I mean, I mean, the, there's real conflict. I mean, I don't think this is any sort of a spoiler. Like, there's real conflict between um, Richard and his children, particularly with Venus. I mean, the movie's and, really and, about and his, Venus. And his They're, wife, which and I, his I, wife. that's the scene that you're you're talking about that gives the balance is very good. It, when she calls him yeah. out on his nonsense, which which is approaching nonsense at that point, some of it. Like I, you you understand the yes, rhythms, he, you understand he's... the logic, but she is saying you. You're giving yourself too much credit. It, there, there is an irony in the movie about, you know, he's trying to teach them about humility and not being bragging, but he runs yes. his whole life in that way. Yes, and so, and, but that's the that's the nature of the salesman type, yes. right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, like, you know, these people. One of the thing that categorizes these kind, this character, right? this kind of American character is that they say things in the moment with absolute certainty and conviction. And they, 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 they project an absolute certainty in what they say and in the truth of it. And then they will say something later with the same amount of certainty that is a hundred percent contradictory to that. That's part of what they bring to the table for, you know, that's, that's what it is, is, you know, you know, People people mistake honesty and authenticity often, right? Like to be that kind of a great salesman, you believe what you're saying when you say it. This is true. You are yeah. you are speaking your truth at that yeah. moment. Yes, I mean it's obviously like he talks about. Oh, I'm afraid of pushing the girls. I'm afraid of pushing the girls. Meanwhile, he's pushing them, saying they're going to make us all ma- bajillionaires. Yeah. Right? And people point that out to him in the movie, right? I mean, that's like that's that's yeah. not subtext. That's the, his text. wife calls him out. Uh, Macy calls him yeah, out. Coach I mean, calls him out, and eventually I, I do have to, Venus I, calls him out. I do have to say, I know, I know, Will Smith is going to get a lot of attention, and he's widening a, like a, uh, a a front runner lead on winning the Oscar because of it. Uh, John Bernthal, I think, is great. Oh, he's great. He's great. <laughs> he's so he's good. Great. He's great. And they, they made him do that hair. <laughs> oh, so God. Good. Oh, God. He is. He was... That was great. That was... I mean, honestly, yeah. He's like the nice version of the Ben Stiller character from Happy Gilmore. Oh, or something. yeah, like, yeah, He's yeah, got yeah. heavy energy like that. But, I mean, in terms of my spoiler-free takeaway yeah, before yeah. we get into spoilers... Sure. Here's what I would say about this movie. I think... You know, we talk about fan service, right, a lot. Uh, in a context of a movie like Ghostbusters, where it's yeah. gross and disgusting, I think this movie does a service, right? Venus and Serena Williams uh, and the aspects of their story deserve to be told. They are significant culturally, they're significant athletically. 
is this movie like groundbreaking cinematically? No. no. No, it's not. It's done I think I think it's very workmanlike. I think it's very effective. I think it's very, you know, technically well done, but it's not it's not breaking new cinematic ground. But I think that I'm, I enjoyed it more than I expected I would. I would recommend it to a lot of people. I probably, honestly, I, I mean, this is a movie that a lot of people would enjoy. It's, it's very yes. accessible. It's very, it's, 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 it's very, it, you know, it's very effective at doing the thing it wants to do. It avoids some of my classic biopic pitfalls. Like, it doesn't talk about too long a span of time. No. It yeah. picks something very specific, and it kind of... It picks a good chunk that makes internal sense. It isn't the part that you necessarily know as much about. Yeah. Um, it is an Oscar Beatty performance by Will Smith, but it's a good one. I mean, he does a good job. I will ha- yeah, I will. He's have a to... very believably Richard Williams. His physical gait in how he moves yes, is he... actually re. I was like, yeah, that's informing you about his past. It informs you about why he can't physically play tennis, why he can't engage yes. in what he has obsessed about and, and put put an interest in. Uh, he, that the accent is 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 not over the top. Like uh, it is a very measured performance. Yes, for him. he. I think I think he he is very believably Richard Williams, which is hard to do as a very recognized one of like. One of the most recognizable people in the world, right? A super megastar. He does a good job of that. And I did not find it, it like it maybe is a little hagiographic about about the daughters, particularly Venus, but you know what? For their childhood years, we'll give them a little bit of hagiography. They're kids. They are very special and exceptional people. Yeah. I thought it was balanced about him. I mean, you know, I, I think it's interesting what you said about how people respond in the theater. I, I, I think that's fascinating. Oh, well, when we get into some of the specifics, you'll be very surprised. Because I thought it was a very, to me, it was, like I said, it was very much, uh, it came off as a, as a warts and all portrayal. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, and of course, could there have been more warts? Could, I mean, it's hard to... How do you strike that balance in the context of making a film? I'll just say that there are plenty of moments where he has the wrong of it and he comes off as speaking out of both sides of his mouth with regards to his children. Yeah. Uh, at least as I experienced the movie. Yeah. For me to not be taken out of it by feeling like, okay, this is just... Like I said, I feel like given that it was made by the, the the people involved were behind this movie, the actual humans, that I, I found it to be very balanced and I found mm-hmm. it to be a very real portrayal. And like I said, I personally find characters like that interesting. Yeah. These ambiguous American characters, right? Yeah. I just, those are people who I am drawn to, sort of charismatic, kind of... And also, I mean, he's a gambler, right? Yeah. And I, I like that, too. He sort of lets it... Like, and when I came over to the movie, which, you know, this is all historical fact, he kind of lets it ride where a lot of people wouldn't. And it's, you say, like... Yeah. like it's, it's not uncut... That's impressive. Yeah, it's like, not uncut gems level letting it ride and, like, doing some... This is, he doesn't say, this is how I win. This no, this is, is not, I, this is how I win. Uh, no, but but there is there is an unset- I mean, unsettling for for Macy, unsettling for people around this. I mean, he's they're just like nobody's done this this way. What is what, what yeah, are you and, doing? And and I think that yeah. I, I, so for me, like this movie came together, and it and like mm. I said, I mean, this is the kind of movie I could imagine. Like you know, we're gonna talk about Power of the Dog, which is a masterpiece, right? But I'd probably recommend this movie to like more like if I was given random selection of people, I'd say well, you'd probably like King Richard, right? But this is a hot Whereas Power more... of the Dog, you're gonna recommend to certain people. Certain people, no, it's, it, it is a particular mood that that movie. Well, is. And it's a particular kind of person who's yeah. gonna really latch Ta- into latch that. into it and a- attach but, themselves. But like I thought, like in this movie, like we've been we've been complaining about long movies. This power movie is two hours twenty, and I didn't think it dragged. I mean, it, you, you, I I will agree with that. I, it does not drag. It, so, it because of the the energy, because of the personality uh, from everybody. It's yeah, not yeah. Will Smith. A lot of a lot of great supporting performances. Yeah, the, those kids they really capture. I mean, like I said, the movie is way more about Venus than Serena, but I mean they do capture that kind of. 
like friendly positivity of the Williams sisters, which really is. And I mean, like one of the themes that, and I'll just say this as a final note, like one thing that, you know, the thing about guys like Richard Williams is that sometimes they're right. And that's why they succeed. Sometimes they really are right about something. And one thing that he is right about is that the way that all the privileged white parents treat their kids in tennis is certainly no less horrible than the way he treats his kid, and probably more so. Because yeah. what the rich people do is they outsource it. They send their kids away to these tennis academies, yeah. which are like boarding schools. Yes. <laughs> and they make someone else abuse them. And, and right? Which is, to me, a lot more messed up and seems to be a lot more damaging because, as you said, the Williams sisters have like, for public figures, they've really done tremendously. I mean, Serena has had a few, like one on court incident in particular, the Naomi Osaka thing, where she like threatened the line judge and lost the match because of it. I mean, she's a hot competitor, yeah. but like in terms of off the court stuff, incidents, oh, yeah. I mean, not a beep really. I mean, so, I mean, you gotta. You know, credit where credit's due, right? I mean, yeah, credit where credit's due in that case. So before we get into spoilers, I'll I'll, I'll like respond to that because uh, I think I think you're correct. I think what threw me off was my in theater experience, which I think a lot of people will have with this movie. They'll have a similar experience that well, I. Well, a have. lot of most people watch it at HBO Max. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> uh, I suppose anybody who's like, oh, they go to the movies for their movies. Like you yes. know, you're going to be. A, you know, you're going to be within this sort of uh, this reactionary hub of of essentially affirming pretty much everything that he does. Uh, th- that because the movie, the movie's ultimate like conclusion, even when he conflicts with like his kid. <sighs> Yeah, like it, it's, uh, I mean, it's, that, it's a that's bizarre kind of like, thing. It's kind of like the Michael Corleone syndrome, right? How you like mm-hmm. root for the protagonist. Well, maybe. no, so for me, so for me, there are many scenes where he just like takes charge, uh, especially with like Tony Goldwyn, who plays their first coach. I forget what his, the, the name. Yeah, uh, no, I know what you're talking about. But <laughs> like he comes over and he like, cause he just basically, uh, Basically, it erupts I mean, an entire professional meeting in, in in a completely unprofessional manner. That the entire it is mildly funny, but when he gets like down to it, he's like, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" And, he, and he's like, "No, I'm I'm doing this. We're gonna pull him out of juniors. We're gonna do do all this stuff because I think it's best." And after for me, it was unsettling watching the movie, okay. but uh, watching the scene because I think that's you're supposed to be like, "Oh my god, what are yeah. you doing?" But then and and the, but the crowd was like really into it they're really into him uh, you know <laughs> just just napalming well, let, that professional let, meaning let's meaning. just go to spoilers because i think that i think so do we want to how much trouble do we want to get into um i think the movie i actually kind of like i mean it's interesting to me that you had that experience with this scene so basically what happens in the scene is Richard gets uh, through his through Serena's first coach meets with a couple of guys from was it from Nike or was that no it's not Nike no, they're yet agents. they're he meets agents with a couple agents yeah and Richard basically he he start, opens up making a joke about how it's nice how everybody took off their hoods when they came in yeah and he proceeds to like the guy says well what your situation given your situation given your background it's like you mean because I'm black he does that. I see. I found... no, no. I, 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 I didn't have a. a no, it wasn't that scene. I understand that scene and how he handles it. I understand that. See, I, but I, th- the, uh, just to make the broader, just to just to give you my broader takeaway yeah. to color the whole conversation, I thought the movie handled race very well. Oh yes, because yes. it's they. You could have imagined like this movie doesn't do a lot of things. That, there's a lot of dogs that don't bark in this movie. Like. There wasn't some big scene where someone got in the girl's face and, like, N-worded them or no, something. Yeah. Like, I expected there to be a scene in the movie that was really on the nose. Uh, and I don't know whether or not that ever happened, right? Um, but, like, it's all very subtle, right? And there are some times where Richard Williams is, like, the racial provocateur to white people in ways that I thought were, like... I thought I thought the movie was actually handled race like very interestingly yeah, yeah, yeah. in a very sort of nuanced way where sometimes 
like you get a scene like with the agents where it seems like he's just waiting to say this stuff, waiting to sort of pepper them with like, it's like the old like, what do you mean you people kind of thing. Well, and and I understand it as he's being overly, you could say overly defensive, but I think he is already just skeptical of the entire see, I, apparatus I and a, structure. See, I that, think that's a negotiating tactic. I mean, yeah. I think he's. I think he's a. I think. I think Richard Williams is crazy like a fox. And he's keeping people off balance, right? Yeah. And he knows that when he's interacting with these, like, you know, upper class white sort of genteel liberals, that whatever they think being called a racist or having suggested like the that worst they're always, thing. is the worst thing you could do yeah. to them, right? Right. It's just the worst. So by suggesting it, you you get them on the back foot, right? And then you're just you're just you're just. I mean. I mean, he, he it was just a cat's paw for him. Yeah, because this is that that is an interesting. He knows what you know. He truly believes that he has his daughters are special. He knows that they got something. He's trained them. He's he's conned the, his way into getting them free you know free lessons, free coaches. He he knows how to play the game. You're right. He because it, there is a lot of negotiation, a lot of reading the room. He does it with Macy. Where when Macy's like, I'm gonna give you a contract. I get fifteen percent, and then he's like, he's like, uh, well, how I mean, how do you really feel? Like we we could go. Have you heard of this coach? Yeah, and no, they, I mean, and, I mean, and he's he, like, and then he starts getting flustered. He starts like he's, sweating under the collar. He is really, and he knows that people are underestimating him, and he's just waiting to turn the tables. He's just waiting to you know, turn it, the tables. I, it's it's interesting. The, the but, the, but like, underestimation. I, the underestimation <laughs> is 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 implicable is implied in his race in dealing in that well, world. I mean, because he he's says new. it. He says every nobody respects me. Yeah. One of the first. One of the one of the. There were a few moments early in the movie where I was like, okay, I get it. Like, and that was one of was like nobody respects Richard Williams, but he probably said that and he probably thought that, right? Uh, I mean, it's a little obvious, right? Yeah. But. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's how he felt. But it's like... And I'm sure that he used that to his advantage. It's it's how he talks, his race, uh, his background, his his lack of credentials in this arena. Everyone's going to underestimate him. Yeah. And he, you're right. That, that scene is using it to his advantage. Yeah, I mean, the guy was from Shreveport, Louisiana, right? When they talk about sending someone, you know, down the river, where that comes from is that if you were a slave... The worst thing was to go down the river to Louisiana. Yeah, right. This is this is where that like when we're talking about like white supremacists, racist clan guys. That's the pro circuit right there. Yeah. I mean, you're he, going you're going you're going into dealt, the mouth. You're going into the mouth of the beast. Yeah, he directly dealt there. with the Ku Klux Klan. Something they only hint at. Something they only yeah. mention. Yeah, I mean, so he like and then he you know so I mean yeah he he's got this thing right. Um, yeah, I mean, but what, you know, so you have, but that's, the, to me, that's just more of the things that make him these compelling, ambiguous figures, right? He comes from a terrible situation, right? Yeah. Like, the kind of shit that we don't even see anymore, right? I mean, the level of just, like, out and out, like, accepted racism, like, you just beat the shit out of a black person, and then nothing would come to you no matter what. Yeah. Right? No matter who you were, so long as you are white, right? That's a kind of, like... That's a level that none of it's very hard for us to get to, right? To imagine what but what would that do to you? Yeah. And he comes out, and he, you know. And so, what does he do? He decides, well, I'm going to make life better for my kids. Every parent feels that way, right? How is he going to do it? Well, his way is a little different. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> he's and, got a little bit of a different method in mind. This is interesting, and so maybe, and this was, uh, and maybe, maybe you can articulate maybe why I felt this way, or maybe why my because you're fascinated in him, and you say it's not a moral way. And my personal more moral fortitude came out in kind of an antagonism to because I, I didn't necessarily agree with every criticism on him. I was like, no, I think discipline is good. I think schedule is good. Like to have like uh, you know a regularity for pe for your kids will provide an avenue for success in a nurturing sort of way. But it is overbearing. It is a lot. Well, then he, at the same point he's saying. Oh, I don't want my kids to be pushed too hard. Yeah, but but he's doing it all the time. I mean, it's, it's totally. But I mean, like I said, people. It's I think it's patently ridiculous, and people in the movie call him out on it. Yes, like yes. I mean, it's not just like it doesn't just hang out there. Like, so, so oh yeah, that's obviously right. You so know? when I walked it back, when I, when I came into my home last night, after having seen the movie, I was asked, "What did you think of the movie?" 
And I was wrestling with it because I, I think, uh, as we stated in the spoiler-free section, I think it's competently made. I think it's an interesting focus for a biopic, uh, much m- much more interesting than the typical biopic as as compared yeah, I mean, to it, it basically it takes a chunk from just when they're starting to get really good as yeah. kids to when Venus plays her famous first match and takes a set off yeah. the best player in the world at fourteen. So it's it's a good like it's a good formative developmental yes. pivotal chunk. Right? So what my it, I was struggling and wrestling with it, and this is why. The movie sort of concludes, even with characters calling Richard out on some nonsense and bullshit. I know. Even when all of this comes around, like the ultimate conclusion of this movie is Richard Williams was correct. Yes, it just puts it on the screen. Yes. It literally, it basically almost he says predicted he it. planned this all. He planned this all. It all came to be. Yes, I thought those cards were kind of hilarious. Yes. And these are literally just like at the very end of the movie. Right before yeah. the credits roll, but I think t- there's a couple of cards that say like I Venus think... did great stuff, Serena did great stuff. Yes, yes. Richard planned and predicted it all. Predicted it all. Yeah. Okay. The I thought that was yeah. I thought that was. But 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 it's with the tone at the end of the movie. But what I thought was odd was it was dissonant to me from the yes, movie, which yeah. is like, I mean, it's very interesting to think about, right? The way life goes, right? Because there's no question that. You you know, th- there's a difference between cause and credit, right? Yeah. There's yes. n- there's no way that they become who they are without Richard. I think that's I fair think to that's say, true. right? I mean, like I, that level of like, w- would they have become great athletes in some way? Would they have gone in a different direction? Would they have played different sports? Who knows, right? But the idea that they would both be like tennis prodig- prod- prodigies without. Richard doing what he did, that's hard to believe. Yeah. I mean, that would be insane. On the other hand, like, who do you give the credit to, right? Yeah. Well, obviously, they get the credit for the most part. Uh, and th- this sort of, this attempt to kind of just say, yeah, I guess what he did was good because it had a good result. I, I think that, that that sort of a blanket, kind of bald statement is at odds with the rest of the movie, which, like mm. I said, is a lot more yes. ambiguous as to the, the, the morality of what he's doing. Yeah. And right? cause, because that made me question whether there was a sincerity to the criticism throughout the movie. Or did they have to do that as obstacles for Richard to keep pressing forward now, i agree with you i think the movie is handled in a nuanced way i think you separate the movie you're right there's a dissonance and maybe that's why it like landed yeah i thought so that i thought those were weird i agree with you there i didn't i didn't be- that, because, that struck me as like okay i get it because i'm not yeah. i wouldn't look at this because i think the, the wrong takeaway from this movie would be to be like well all all parents should be like richard williams <laughs> yeah, i don't I think that would be the wrong that would be a funny, takeaway. That would be a funny takeaway. But but there is an element of the lessons he imbues to his children, the success that not only they had, but his other three children are not not famous, but they are very well they're situated in careers because of the plans he made for them as well. That you know, again, there's this conversation of nature, nurture, and his nurturing borderlines on and i but borderlines i'm not saying it is abuse it, there there are there could be abusive tactics to this i do agree with you him taking personal responsibility to train them being so engaged in their lives to be with them is the exact opposite of what is similar to what white privileged parents do. They send them away. I think that is 100% true. And that's more abusive. That's more damaging. Yeah, and they they end up going to, like, sham schools, too, right? Yeah. It's like their education is basically, you know, sidelined. I like his personal investment. I like that he believes in his daughters. But there is sort of a derangement here that does take it to extremes. I'm not saying that this is not a plausible way of raising your kids i just don't, i don't want the film to be like this is sort of an approved way or maybe the way to make greatness and i 
I, I it 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 I left the theater with that weighing on me. I'm like, is that what they're saying? I don't think they're trying to, but again, there's a weird ending to this movie that might give that implication. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I find those those cards at the end to be kind of ridiculous. So I'm with you there. I remember kind of rolling my eyes at that. Uh, but I mean, what is the movie trying to say? And I mean, is it trying to say anything in particular? I mean, I like the fact, like I said, it's a movie about some significant people, right, who deserve to have their lives made into movies, right, Mm -hmm. who deserve to have their lives kind of there for, you know, generations that come after to look at and say, like, yes, some, you know, two great uh, tennis players, including the greatest one ever, came out of this situation that is not ideal, that is not you know, that was not kind of the way that everyone else did it, that had adversity, that had difficulty, uh, that, you know, I mean, like, uh, the first chunk of this movie all happens in this city where we live in Los Angeles, down in Compton, Compton, right? Which is a mostly black, fairly poor part of the city, right? They come out of that part of the city and they make good, right? And that, you know, th- those stories are important, right? Yes. Those stories are important that kids see those stories, particularly kids that aren't white, especially kids that are black. They see those stories and they think, yeah, I could do it. Yeah. I could do it. I could do it. There's someone I to look up to. I can have a hero, right? And we, we are sort of old and jaded and come from the world of anti-heroes. Yeah. But, but I do think that... Um, I think they emerge as heroes, as true true heroes, from an ambiguous situation with a father who is certainly a big part of the reason they're there, but also has ambiguous characteristics that I think yeah. the movie does service to. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, when, the, the, when his wife calls, his wife calls him out twice. Uh, one, one being the scene where... Uh, one, when I was watching it, obviously him erupting that meeting, good negotiating tactic, I think we can confirm and, and land on that. But when he, when he tells Tony Goldwyn's character, I'm not, we don't need, your services yeah. are not provided anymore, and he basically fires him. And his wife, he walks away, and his wife's like, why don't you, you thought maybe <laughs> you that decision have could have talked that. to me? <laughs> maybe talk to Venus yeah. about that decision? And he's like, and he, he's perplexed that he has to even do this because, you know, it is all his plan. He's the one who fashioned it. And then she doubles down on that criticism later on when they're in Florida. And it's a great scene. It's great for her as an actress. Um, you know, I, I forget everybody's name, but it's because I'm not very good with names. Everyone should know this immediately. But and and her her name is quite difficult to say uh, on genou on genou ellis uh she's great and she's fantastic she doesn't get a lot but in the moments that she gets to puncture through uh she really takes command you know i i think that's one thing that the movie does is really strong acting across the board i think yeah yeah I, like the, the supporting the supporting actors young girl the young her, girls the two coaches the the girls that play venus and serena yeah, sonia sydney who plays venus demi singleton who plays serena i mean they are great yeah are I, think, I think i think everyone that's why i said i think everyone like to me this is your classic like uh would recommend above average, widely accessible movie. It, That's what it, this it is, is. It is all that. This is a movie that like a lot of people will enjoy. It, it's a service that it exists. I'm happy that I watched it. Uh, it's not. You don't have to be an update up to date cinephile, no, right? No, you no, can just no. be a regular, you know, this is a person. You know, even and with its, you'll 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 get something out of it. You'll yeah. enjoy it, even with its complexities. It is a crowd pleaser because it, it yeah, it, it's, 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 it is it's, one of those it's, inspirational it's a, stories. The that... climactic scene where she's like, but this is why I think it's so funny to think of of Richard as being this unambiguous hero. Like the climactic scene. Where Venus makes it clear that she's going to play in this tournament, she is literally assaulting him with tennis balls. He he goes out to hit with her, and she just is rifling ground strokes back at him, yeah. like actually trying to hurt him. Yeah, and like I I it was moving and it was effective and it was a tearjerker of a scene. Ultimately, it is. It is. But like I mean, 
she's pissed, right? Yeah. And she's got the better of the argument, and he's going to come around to her position. Yeah. And so I, I think that, you know, like I said, I mean, I, I just, I like this movie. I, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I and I did too. I, I did not walk out thinking that was a bad movie. No, I thought it was uh, really well filmed, although uh, pedestrian in a way, although this is Robert Ellswood, who is... Uh, a great cinematographer. He shot There Will Be Blood. Uh, so, yeah, I think I, mean, I think it looks. I think it looks really good. I, I, I it looks particular for a period piece. I think I think they they really do try and get a color tone that feels very nine early nineties. Yeah, like, it is that. And it's it's. I mean, I think the tennis is shot really well. Yes, uh, which is always important in a sports movie. You got to make the sport look good. You know, I was surprised. So, there was a lot again. So I'm going to bring it back, and I'm going to tell you two moments of cheering that I found perplexing. Well, but one of which I was surprised people understood tennis enough to cheer. <laughs> like, I mean, clearly when you, when you, when it's like a, a forty love, like you know, you, like the the scoring of tennis eludes me half the time. It's it's a it's an odd uh, system. Yeah, it's have. an odd system, but. Obviously, when you're filming stuff and you have the right people react to, uh, you know, a grounder, uh, and they they win that 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 serve, obviously you can respond to that as an audience. I was just very surprised that people were following the tennis enough yeah, yeah, to uh, to cheer when they did. <laughs> the, there was one very very uncomfortable part for me of the cheering. That's what I want to hear. This is, this is the real shit. So and then we'll talk about part of the dog. Yeah. So part of the movie. Uh, and I think it, as as you stated, they're, they're, because of its inspiration, because it's focused in on Compton. I mean, you can go to other movies like Singleton's Boys in the Hood and get a, a similar message and trajectory. And this one is about living in that place and focusing on the right things and not on the wrong things. And perhaps that will get you out of this situation. And I think that those are good lessons to have. I think in any sort of community, in any sort of uh, place uh, and I and I I think that that is a good lesson to come out of this movie but it, they do have some uh, because of what they do some inner city violence and uh, a portrayal of that and that it was on the periphery and all at times directly involved in their lives um, obviously the sequences where this uh, there's a gangster and he basically is uh, flirting with Tun Tundi uh, his his 16 year old uh, his oldest daughter very uncomfortable very I mean it shows a dynamic of uh, of the world that is unsavory I think realistic obviously yeah. um yeah, and they're, setting... they're, they're, they're hollering at her oh right? yeah they're, no and, it, and they're hollering at her she's trying to study and they're you know yeah it, it culminates to a, a beatdown of Richard in, in, in a mockery where they're taunting him, say they'll run a train on his daughter. It's yes. very awful. And he retaliates. He fights back. He gets beat up. They go to a scene, and this prob probably happened, or he, or it it came into his mind. You could say that it might be like a weird dream sequence, where this is what he imagined what he wanted to do after that. He follows them to... Liquor store, diner, something, somewhere where they're getting food and they're oh. hanging out. And he gets out of his car with a gun and he's about to go over him. The idea is he's probably going to shoot this kid, um, which, uh, or threaten him. Either or, bad situation. Either he dies or he kills or uh, yes, yes. It, it's going to be bad. Yes. A drive by happens at that moment, eliminating this guy with, with machine gun fire, Uzi yes. fire. Yes. Uh, my my uh, theater erupted in applause. Whoa! That is fucked up. <laughs> that is fucked up. I agree with you. That is fucked up. See, I thought you were saying the scene where he cold cocked him. Like, I, I, that's fine. No, nope. if you if you get like yeah when he no he, I, when I, he sucker punches I, him that I support him cold cocking him with uh, cool. with a tennis racket. But it just t just yeah to cheer at him just being wiped. For, uh, for yeah, inner, I was like, well, we, do up. we not understand like the context of like inner city violence and like, uh, like yeah, I don't know, this, I don't know what to do with that, but I agree with you. That it was, was rough. That would that would that would turn my stomach. That, no it, question. It was, uh, no and that's question. early on in the movie, so uh, yeah, no, that would set a weird tone. No, it no did, doubt, it did set a weird tone for my theater. Uh, any any sort of cheering, I almost had the opposite reaction. So it was just weird, and and again, I think I think it 
you know, talking about it has helped. You know, it's, you know, you can... That's what we do here. We try you know, to help you, you um, And I think, but I think talking about your experience and, like, getting context from different, you know, ways of people experiencing movies can either reinforce how you felt or really put into context, like, oh, what I was feeling was correct. My discomfort for things that Richard Williams was doing, the film also finds discomfort in. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I can see why having... Yeah, that's that's wild that people cheered at that. I, I, it was I, very. I, weird. I don't think we could hang that on the movie. I no, su- no, I certainly didn't. I although it's it is interesting, right? I mean, I I would feel it's funny, right, to go back to seeing movies like I, you know, I saw Ghostbusters in a crowded theater, right? I mean, it's it's a different experience, right? It certainly is when yeah. you see how people are clocking a movie and how. I, I mean, and, and I bet you, you know, a different theater is different. You know, I don't know. It's yeah, interesting. it was so. Just, so in in my summary, I I agree with you. I could recommend this movie as a crowd pleaser because that's what it is. I mean, this is an inspiring story. We all know it, and watching it dramatized is. Well, while I, I still, I don't think I can shake my, that it's a bit sanitized, even though I know that they, it's nuanced and it addresses some of the unsavory aspects of his life. Uh, I do think it's a bit sanitized. The ending is a bit, is a bit odd. And it, I, I think that that will stick personally with me why I don't love the film, but it certainly is not a waste of your time. It moves well. The acting is exquisite. Uh, and... I, yeah, yeah I mean, a, a lot of fa- recommendation. I think it's worth it. A lot of families are going to pop this on after they have Thanksgiving dinner or something like that. Yeah. Or Friday after, you know, when they're all chilling. And it's going to be a good movie. It's going to yeah. be a good movie because it's, it's got broad. It's, I mean, like I said, like we talk about fan service, we talk about four quadrant movies. But like sometimes they're good, right? And well, this I, is this is that kind of a movie. It's, yeah, I, I, I like it. It's guess, you'll you'll enjoy it. I think. I, yeah, probably. I guess it is a four quadrant movie. It's got youth. It's got adults. It's got young it's people. Got, I mean, yeah, I mean maybe really young kids. But even there, like, I mean, well, like what would be the other? There's a couple of n words in the in that yeah. climactic fight between he Richard and his wife. And his yeah. wife. Uh, yeah, there's there is that one moment of violence, although it's not really graphic. It's not graphic. It's you from see a it distance. from far away. Yeah. Uh, he gets beaten up a couple times. Is a little roughed up. But, uh, but ultimately, is it? But yeah, it is I mean, a it's, family. it's I, yeah. I would I would show this to you know it's PG thirteen. I mean, I think you could you could show it to a lot of kids too. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think for what it is, for what it's trying to do, what it the the position it has like in the market right of movies you could watch. Um, I would certainly say, like, I'd rather stay home and watch this than pay a lot of money to go see Ghostbusters with your family. <laughs> yes, say that. yeah. I, I do think this is a more rewarding sort of film. I mean, in, a, in so many ways. That's, yeah, in that's so many a, ways. That's a, um, a big category right yeah. there. Well, you want to talk about... Let's talk something. about Power of the Dog. Power of the Dog. Uh, so, this is a new film from Jane Campion. She's a New Zealand filmmaker. Uh, most people know her from The Piano, 1990. Three, I believe. You know, it's Harvey Keitel. Harvey Keitel wearing no clothes. No clothes. Just chilling Very out. Very naked. There's some uh, naked. That was there's his some na- naked dudes in this movie. There so are some naked dudes. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, this is what I like about Jane Campion. She'll she no has, naked dudes. She has sensual acuity to her works. She, uh, she, if you want to see maybe a glimpse of Benedict Cumberbatch's penis. Yeah. <laughs> Jane Campion is there for you. Is there for you. Uh, so this is an adaptation of Thomas Savage's 1968 novel. It is a Western, though uh, as I knew it was a Western, but as soon as it opened and it said 1925, I'm like, oh, this is like the dead Western. Like these are the people yes, who we're... are the the zombies of the relic that is the West that are continuing in some sort of variety. Uh, yes. But the West is... Uh, yes. It is. We're at, we at the we're at the very end. Uh, yes, we're in Montana, so we're, yeah. we are. I mean, Montana today, a very remote place. Yes, yeah. A hundred so. years ago, somewhat even more so. Yeah. Uh, a very empty. Um, I mean, I guess I, I I guess this was shot in New Zealand. It was. Uh, it was shot but, in New Zealand. You know, yeah. I guess. I mean, that's what Montana looks like, so I guess New Zealand stands yeah. in for Montana just it, fine. It is interesting because some, some, uh, some of the shots of the, the terrain 
are very similar and probably are the same locations we, as Lord we were of the Rings. At the stars. If we were looking at the stars, we would have known, though. Yes, yeah. <laughs> no, no. it looks like Lord of the Rings. Like, you're yeah, like, no, oh, I, this No, is I'm just a... saying if we would have known it was in the southern hemisphere. Because <laughs> yeah. they got different stars down there. They do. And the toilets run the other way. I think that's actually an urban legend. But that's, It is an urban legend. But let's just pretend it's true. So I guess I'll start. I do adore this movie yeah i love this movie it uh you called it a masterpiece earlier and i am not hesitant to lay that oh yeah it, this is i mean we'll get to my minor quibbles sure at yeah. some point but yeah i mean this is this is heavy duty filmmaking yeah i mean it's an exquisite piece of filming just how scenes are orchestrated how they're put together how it's shot i mean this is a great film to kind of break down on how do you what kind of emotion are you putting into the scene uh, that is being informed by camera work, by lighting? I mean, it's a masterwork of just film, filming technician work. But the emotionality at the center of this movie is so complicated. It is such an interesting portrait of what you would call today toxic masculinity. But it is essentially the masculine aura of the american man that uh it probably comes from whatever toxic masculine strains come into today and the damage that it does the damage that it does to community that it does to other people and what it does to yourself which i thought was the most masterful stroke of the movie because it centers, I mean, you, uh, it, while it centers on a, a variety of characters who are all intertwined in sort of a familial drama. A, f- a familial, uh, <laughs> a familial uh, death embrace. <laughs> like, just, just a real, just a real clusterfuck of family. Yeah, I mean, you have a, a widow, a, a, an alcoholic widow. You have the... Uh, you, who marries the brother who is just... Uh, just the most cucked man ever The filmed. most cucked... This is the most... Like, when they talk about... When you see a internet meme about, like, beta males... Oh, my God. This guy is the most cucked He's the dude. ultimate beta male, and it's he's really... So, un... He's so cucked, it's, it's hard to yeah. observe him. I mean, he is so... <laughs> I mean, it is so frustrating and awkward to watch this man and this woman have sort of a, a a relationship and romance that you know is coming to to life and it and then the other people involved are her son who's on the uh, he comes into this familial dynamic and then it's his brother george's brother is uh phil who comes in uh, played by benedict cumberbatch and really he is the center sort of gravitational force of this movie. He is the representation of what the West is. He is the representation of what needs to go away. But he is also what has been wrought and damaged. And the the layers, and when we get into spoilers, when we could talk about this character, he, while, while villainous and terrible is sorrowful and tragic and yes. it bro- it like breaks your heart because everything about this movie is just so tragically sad. Yeah. I mean I mean he is I mean so we take this character. We know this character. This yes. character is John oh, you, This you character is John character. Wayne from The Searchers, right? Yes. He's he's the outsider who like is not he You can say Red River too. I mean he he, can't because they're cowboys, in, yeah. Right? He can't fit in. He has this kind of essential but dwindling role in his world, right? Uh, and he can't fit in, and he doesn't belong. And but he is sort of, uh, like I said, he's he's kind of the the hero that his world demands, right? Yes, yeah. But a role that is contracting, <laughs> that is deeply in contraction, right? Yeah. He's. He is he is yes he is yesterday's man. Yes. Right. He is yesterday's yeah. man. And because he is because of that, he's miserable. He's mis well, he's miserable for a number of reasons. He's miserable for a number of reasons, but because of that misery, what he does in this movie is demand that everyone around him be equally miserable. It's yeah, he's just, a bummer. He's, he's a, a real bummer. bummer. Although, I mean, to be fair. He really demands that his, his that the the people we've already mentioned be miserable because there's all these other cowboys on the periphery who seem to like him 
and who he he's kind of like the leader of his little gang. Of, yeah. Of kind yeah. of. I mean, what what would we call them? He kind of he's like uh, it's like you know I don't know if any we got any wrestling fans out there. He's like he's the heel and he's got his heel stable. He's just got all these guys he's, that are kind uh, of heels with him. Degeneration X. He's yeah, like yeah, he's he, Triple H. He, he, and, uh. and they like him, but they don't really like he. I don't think he respects them very much, right? They're just kind of his dudes, and they follow his lead because he's the alpha male. He is, yeah, right. So it, it's like. There's this very big, there's this sense throughout the movie of like a pack. Like he's the leader of a, this pack, right? Yeah. In fact, it's called the power of the dog, right? Yeah. So I mean, like make of that what you want, but he is the, there's a, he's the big dog. I right? mean, I was wondering what the title referenced, but it references so many things. It, yes. It, it references yes. uh, this idea of, of alpha maleism. It references the, this image that he sees in the mountain that, uh, you know, apparently you have to be very special to see. Yeah. Uh, which, which is, is, is. Play, played for this like revelatory moment, but obviously has some weird humor underneath it, where it's mocking. It's mocking the entire notion that he has of it, and it's and then it's it, there's a passage read. I, I think it's in the Bible. Yeah, at the like... end by uh, Cody Smith McPhee's uh, Peter. I think is the character's name, and so there. There, I mean, obviously the title has a lot of significance to what is going on in the film and it's not one one part it's, yes. there, there's a Le- multitude of meetings there's levels Le- like the movie it is ambiguous and rich and uh, evocative yes it's very evocative yes this is a very evocative movie i mean i feel like we should get to spoilers pretty quick yeah this, this to is talk a, about specifics this, i think is where this is a great movie yeah you, if you like movies, this is for you. If you like really like movies, like I said, it doesn't have the broad appeal of something like King Richard, but uh, as a visual experience, just alone, it is a tour de force. I yeah. mean, it is absolutely. Yeah. This is the best thing she's done since the piano. It is absolutely the 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 visual quality of it. It has a wonderful sort of emptiness to it, yes. right? It feels. It feels it is perfectly complemented by a Johnny Greenwood score, which yeah. just, where things this tremendous sense of space, but also tremendous use of mise, mise en scène, right? Because she does a great it's job one of, those of having film school words. She ha, she does a great job of having both uh, Phil and other people kind of in the background, right? Like kind of lurking, just lurking, yeah. right? There's a lot of lurking in this movie. <laughs> And you'll just kind of see the, like the faintest out of focus fill in the background, yeah, right? Yeah. It's kind of lurking about. Uh, it is it is great. It, come, Benedict Cumberbatch is going to get awards attention. Cody Spit McPhee certainly should. Kirsten Dunst will. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, Clemens is will. a little understated. The so movie it, will. I, yeah. I like Jesse Plemons. No, no, but it's great. I'm just saying it's understated he's as com- compared to everybody else. Yes, and, and he, honestly, he he's. I think he probably has less screen time, yes. which has an effect. Uh, certainly, cinematography, all all of those things. Uh, but it's really good. Yeah. It's really good, and it's, it's really phenomenal and film. it and it goes, and it it, it like. It go for me at least. I would say it went initially kind of where I thought it was going to go, and then it went in a very different direction than I thought it was going to go. Yeah, and so without being like a big twist, um, but it just it 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 un, it unravels itself in a way that I found yeah. actually surprising and yeah. interesting. It it sets it up in familiar ways, much like how genre pictures are. I mean, it utilizes that genre familiarity. Like you said, with Benedict Cumberbatch being an embodiment of a character you know. You you know this in like pop culture or just historical context of cinema. But but he, th- these were real people, based off real people who were, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to say monstrous, you know, because I don't think the mo- movie, even though he is a, he, he does monstrous things uh, and has a monstrous philosophy and attitude. Uh, the film treats it as a, a, a product of, of something else rather than it being his his own doing. And so... But what, which, which, which Western that we watched is it where... They, I think it might be Man Who Shot Liberty Valance where it's like 
they're gonna you know they're gonna have to put people like us in the ground to make this a good place to yeah live. yes yeah i'm not sure if it, it could be that but it could have been something else yeah i mean that, that's the western mindset right yes and that's yeah. the, sort of the so so i think i think to call these like the people are monstrous but they're monstrous in the way that like people who go to war knowing that they're going to die are monstrous. They're yeah. monstrous in the yes. sense that they're very yeah. hard for us to understand. Yeah, because right? this is because the it's terrain. so far. It's like you go out thinking like, I'm going to take my chances out here. I might well die. Yeah. Right? That's a... The... the, the like, that's the mythology of the West. Right? And this... The, the Phil character, the Benedict Cumberbatch character is so wrapped up in that mythology of being like, I'm going to be sort of larger than life right like he's someone who's like kind of willed himself to be this guy right who is like the the hero of the american west as that well as that whole world is dying yeah right it's very like it's like if you it's like if you saw the searchers and you said that that's who i want to be Mm. that's who i want to because be. The... and you sort of made yourself into that by a kind yeah. of act of will because the movie sort of suggests that that's not how he started out as a person. Yeah, yeah. Right? It, it is interesting because it, th this is the landscape and terrain, the violent shaping terrain of the West. That that we, I mean, we did a whole season on this. We did a whole season on the Western and the implications of culture and, and mythology and where those come from. And you're right. I think there were real characters such as an Ethan Edwards and the Searchers that back in the day were heroes to young boys and heroes on the plains because you know it was a violent place it was a uncertain place and you had to have a certain amount of will and power and uh, moral eh, ambiguity uh you know yeah, in, you're, in... you're playing a different game yeah right you're just exactly. playing a different game like like uh, how whatever how are you want to see these people right in light of present day I mean, they just, their world is not ours, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's wild. But I mean, but I mean, what, one, one thing that's contextually interesting about this movie is this is the moment where things are pivoting. Yes. Right? And the movie isn't a ton about that, but I think that that is important, right? Because you yes. see, even the way, like, the costumes work, um, where... So you see people wearing like very old timey western stuff, and then you see people wearing like flapper dresses. Yes, like yeah. the the movie is very much kind of. But then also, their pa his parents are dressed in like Civil War attire. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. It's, and then, the, so, the and range the is incredible. The massive furs, right? Yeah. Just the massive, like <laughs> just looking. Yeah, so it's it's the movie like is very much kind of has that feeling of. You know, we're right. Like this is this is it. Like this is the mm -hmm. end of this. This right? is the end. This is the end of a thing. And it and it needs to be the end, and for for a lot of reasons. And like who is who is the past and who is the future? Yes, it's and it has of... troubling implications about the future, doesn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> fair to say, right? I mean. I guess we should we could get to spoilers now. Yeah. I well, mean, we so, might as well. But I mean, whatever. We love this movie. We love it. Go see it. Yeah, it's gonna be on Netflix in a couple weeks. So yeah, a week from uh, well, this, December first. This, will, 1st, this will come out tonight. So, but December you're probably 1st. gonna watch it on Tuesday of the uh, of the Thanksgiving week. So next week on Wednesday, Wednesday, yeah, December first. Yeah, I mean, it's coming so. out. It's it's coming out. I it's playing here. It's I'm sure it's playing in New York. I don't know if it's playing anywhere else, yeah. but. But uh, it's yeah, it's well worth your time. Yeah, it's, so it's yeah. going to be in you know uh, end of year type yeah. conversations. So getting into this, I mean, obviously, yes. So Phil is shaped by what I would imagine is probably an Ethan Edwards sort of character. It's reference he he looms large over the the ranch and looms large over the influence of his upbringing, which has sexual connotations. It, I mean, overtly and uh and subtly that that they that this is a man who is shaped by a man of the west somebody who has that sort of and, and we've talked about this in the western season is that the implications of men in this time and their the the connection whether it goes beyond brotherhood i mean obviously this movie says beyond, that it does beyond brotherhood beyond Are brotherhood you talking about i'm talking about homosexuality were you, were, you, were you naked <laughs> were you naked uh so, so let me i want to tell you some things that this movie does one of the things that i love most 
for movies to do, which is to give you to plant details and not pay them off in some real clear cut yes, way. Yes, yeah. So like we learn halfway through the movie about that he was that that Phil was Phi Beta Kappa at Yale, right? Which is kind of shocking, right? Given who he is or how he he's presents. He's incredibly intelligent, though. Yeah, he's, well, you know he, the you banjo. Know the banjo. He's playing like Schubert, like or something like that. Like he's playing no, a no, classical he, piece. You, you you get the sense that there's stuff going on with this dude, right? But like it is revealed at some point that he was Phi Beta Kappa at Yale, right? But so what do you expect? Well, if you're watching a, a worse movie than this. Even like an average movie, that you expect there to be a scene later where he's like, well, I was this person, but now I decided to be this person, and everybody wanted me to be this, and I did that. It never, it's never explained. It's never, they never talk about it. It's never, you're never given the scene that like closes that loop. Uh, yeah. I, I love that. I love yes. it when movies do that. Because it's just so, or like, so, so he's obsessed with this guy Bronco Henry. And I keep waiting for him to talk more about Bronco Henry because he talks about him in these very vague terms, right? Like, well, he, he was put, a real great man. The, it, <laughs> a of lot of times, it's in remembrance, like the, he's they're taking a drink for Bronco Henry to. Or pay he tells him like a little story, like we made him jump this thing and we gave him a nag, but he did it anyways. I keep waiting for either the flashback or the moment where he says, "Yeah, that's right, me and Bronco Henry, we like to fuck." Or uh, he was the best. I loved him. So glad. So glad they didn't do that. And that you never. Bronco Henry is just like they keep on mentioning him, but he he. It's entirely for you to decide. Yeah. Right. You. He's. He looms over this whole movie, and over the whole Phil character, and you end up knowing just very little about him. And I love that because there's so much the movie. Do, I, I'm always complaining about American movies and how they tell you how to feel. This movie's just so ambiguous. Like, who yeah. was Bron- what did Bronco Henry do to Phil? Were they lovers? Did Bronco Henry rape Phil? Mm-hmm. Like, what? Like, and he doesn't like, know how to contextualize. Yeah, d- does d- like what was the, like it was a grooming type relationship where it was like he took him under his wing. We don't know, right? Yeah. I mean, it certainly is implied. I mean, how what do we know? So uh, the big reveal is. Uh, the Pete character finds like a box of like turn of the century pornography or the closest thing you could get then with yeah. Bronco Henry's yeah. name some on Some dime it. novels and, and of pictures na- of, of naked of, men. Of naked dudes. And okay. And and meanwhile we see we see uh, Phil kind of cavorting with a Bronco Henry uh, handkerchief or something. It's got BH. He's got it's, BH on it, and it's various. It's very sensual scene. It's great, but very Benedict sensual. Cumberbatch looking good, looking great. looking jacked, looking like he, he really. He looks incredible. He did, His performance is immaculate. Kumail's probably wishing he could have done this movie for all the work he did to get in shape to be Kingo. Yeah, there's the, there is the handkerchief but moment which Benedict I think is looking uh, looking strong, very looking strong. beefy. There's a hank that handkerchief moment, but there's also I mean the implications of taking down the saddle, Bronco Henry's saddle, and oh, there's this basically movie, rubbing if, if it. If you have and a fetish with seeing masculine hands caressing leather, <laughs> this is the movie that you need to see right now. This is gonna be like the most important movie of your life. Like men just like just caressing leather. And you hear just it. Like, like just there, there, rubbing it. There just is like, that erotic noise. It's so erotic. It. It's it's just so sensual. They're just rubbing the just rubbing the leather. <laughs> if, if that is like and I guarantee you people have this fetish. We are kink positive here. Um, <laughs> We're no I'll, kink I'll today, so no we kink do not shaming. kink shame, we do not yuck people's yums. I'll tell you if this is your yum, you, this movie you need to w- run, don't walk. You can put this on the poster, Jane Campion. If you have a fetish for seeing leather caressed, run, don't walk. Yeah. Get a plane ticket yeah. to some place that's showing this movie on the big screen. You will not be disappointed. And so everything about this, everything about it, as you said, it's my favorite thing about the movie is that just looks it great. shows doesn't tell. Yeah, it is just, and there's these huge pockets of ambiguity. Where it's like, yes, for you to figure out what Bronco Henry, what he was, like you, that's just for on you. 
that's just on you. You can you can fill in that blank a lot of different ways in ways that have interesting implications. Yeah. Right? And so like how Phil it... ended up like this guy who like in one scene like Phil's just like, I like to be dirty. He's just like he he won't clean up to come see the governor and his parents. Which which I think at the end of the movie we, and Katie and I when we talked about it. They when he de- when he's dead in that we're in spoiler territory, so when he's dead in this movie the first thing they do is shave and clean him. Yeah, they destroy him. Which is such him. a betrayal. They destroy it's him. Sep- yeah, they just they, they they destroy him. Yeah, they emulate because they, he they... has no place. Yeah, he he's he's uh, he's the last of his kind. Yeah, he's the last of his kind. Yeah, he, and it, he cannot be. Uh, you know, the world is not for him anymore. Yeah. So the. Which is so interesting, right? Yes. Because he was going to be the modern man. Yes. Right? At some point in his life, he chose to go from Montana to Connecticut to get a degree from one of the most prestigious universities in America, then as now, Yale. He made that decision. He did that thing. Yeah. And what he was like then and how he's changed to now and what got him from point A to B and why he took that journey... We don't know. Yeah. You just got to think about that. And I love that. I love, love, love that. Yeah. Because I think it really lets you actually absorb the movie. Yeah, absolutely. And and then and then because it lays all these little breadcrumbs of, of of visual implications, visual hints, every scene that operates, like once you've seen the movie, you can go back and understand what is the drive what is the emotion what is the purpose behind each of these sequences he is so you know because of this he is so lonely he's so isolated he's, he's so, so he's so sad sad that's I, what i loved about it. it's just how sad he was like there's no there's no attempt to kind of I don't know, like, I, I expected him to be more conniving. Mm-hmm. So basically, he wants... This starts out, he wants to undermine his brother's marriage. Yeah. With the Kirsten Dunst character, who he thinks is some sort of a gold digger, or so he says, right? I think he just can't... Because he can't have love in the way that he feels, He, he it, it irritates him or disgusts him that his brother would find it in, in, in a woman. Like, he... he wants it to be brother and brother and not in a sexual way it's just he wants his brother to be just as alone and dependent upon him well maybe that's the classics connection because honestly i feel like his conception of romantic and erotic love is very greek it's very masculine it's like real thing is like they make an older man they make a romulus and uh yeah they they make the the brothers of started rome uh, implication well but this is plato's symposium too right the idea that what you do is you're an older man and you take a younger man under your wing and you have this men pouring in sexual relationship. And it's like a very... It's funny, right? Because he, he comes off as a misogynist, right? Who hates this woman. But it's like that's like the old school misogyny, right? Is the idea that like masculinity in every sense, right? He seems to be someone who is like very... in He... he even his sexual desires invest in just this veneration of masculinity, right? Which is a very specific kind of uh, way of being queer, or however we want to think about it, right? And it's but it does have a very classical antecedent, right? Yeah. And he certainly is giving off this this energy, like like he, you know, it's funny, right? Because we have this stereotype, and I guess maybe the Peter character is about this of kind of homosexuality is being effeminate right but is which i don't think he is but, but he plays into it but like this masculinity right this like i'm a man and the only thing i like is men and male yeah, things yeah, yeah. right including sex with men i'm not interested in softness and femininity or anything that is in any way gendered feminine right like being sensitive, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> like, like. Whereas Jesse Plemons' character is very much kind of like he starts to endear himself to his future wife by like helping her serve, basically stepping in and becoming a 
a waiter at her restaurant. So he he he's like he embodies like virtues that are gendered feminine, right? Yeah. Of domesticity and concern and being not. I mean, I mean, the, the sort of first conflict in the movie occurs because Phil is mean to Pete because he makes these fake he has flowers, a, a wine. Well, the flowers, but also the wine drip. Yes, yes. Uh, so basically, he's very he, culture. He starts this process of you know what do they call him a Nancy boy or whatever, just saying that he's gay. Calls, calls him Lord Fauntleroy. Yeah, he's just saying point. that he's yeah. gay <laughs> and he's effeminate. And Jesse Plemons starts his relationship with Kirsten Dunst by going to her and just being sorry and thinking like, well, this is very uncouth. So you have like a much more modern, like he's a much more modern man in the sense that he is not invested in like hyper masculinity, yeah. right? And you have this kind of classical notion of masculinity, which is just extreme. Like when you think about it, the most hyper, there is a sort of way in which being gay is the most hyper form of masculinity like i want nothing to do with women, women i want nothing all, yeah. to do with the feminine i hate the feminine i don't want i don't want anything of, and that's who he is he is but the problem yes. is that like he doesn't live in ancient greece right so he doesn't so like everything and i'm sure yeah i'm sure a lot of cowboys were having sex i'm sure there was a lot of gay sex amongst cowboys absolutely i mean, I mean when it's just dudes around we kind of know how it goes down but you can't be proud of that no. Right. It's no. not a thing you can say like, yeah, I just love it. No. He has to keep it in. It's bottled in. It is not something he can express. And so it's 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 the manifestation of that just eroding in his soul yes, and yes, like it's his, corrosive. Yeah, it's corrosive. And it is it's what such we, a, what 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 happens to a dream deferred, right? That's yeah. what Langston Hughes tells us. Like he has this thing inside of him that has no expression. Or no good expression, or no satisfying expression. I mean, he can he can go into the middle of nowhere and put on the Bronco Henry handkerchief and jerk off, but that's it. That's it. that's he's not his even little... doing that. It's more. It's, it's a, well, very. I mean, I'm not sure if he. Well, I mean, well, not, I that, don't know. not that we see. Not I don't that we know. See. I mean, he kind of you know he's he's clearly kind of uh, doing some physical self exploration, but it it's is. it's not it's not satisfying or not sufficient, right? It's pretty yeah. clear. Yeah. So and it 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 leads us to like this is an interesting dynamic because obviously he becomes interested. Obviously he is very antagonistic to what you said is uh, Cody Smith McPhee's character Peter is a feminine. Uh it, but but I don't think gay because he talks about having a girl uh, like a friend who is a girl at school. Uh but he has just p particular you're, you know, he has a very particular way that he is. And so P Phil takes a liking to him. And this is actually kind of the shift in the movie. And I like this shift because at first... It's, yes, this, it's, is, this is where... So, I mean, basically the movie builds up with just increasing antagonism. Between, towards the Rose, the mother. Towards yeah. Rose, the Kirsten Dodds character. And then some of it... I mean, he drives her to alcoholism. Yes. To drink. Yes. She, she is so afraid and miserable not but i should say her husband helps in that in putting her on display for the governor and okay and so, for... so let, let me get to this because this is yeah. this is the one place where i have like i feel like the the the, the phil and the peter character are so well drawn and the, the other two i just i there's they, they don't quite get there for me mm. as characters sure one bit, you know, the Jesse Plemons husband character is 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 very flat. He's the least developmental character, yeah. and he's so cut. And I guess we just have to buy that his brother has just really beaten him into fucking submission. You get prior that, to the events. I of the mean, movie. when they're riding into Montana, yeah. I mean, he he's even says he's like, "Is there something wrong with your gut?" He's like, it, it looks like it pains you yeah, to speak to words. Yeah, so, he calls him fatso all the yeah, time. Yeah. He's mean. So, so, yeah. so but, but the, so I, I guess I buy him more. I just feel like they take the Rose character to such a dark place so quickly. And that was the one thing that I, I that just, like that scene with the governor took me out just a little because she's so obviously miserable and like nobody's reacting to it. Yeah, yeah. And she and like the whole scene is sort of like just like the way she shoots it is it's almost played for a bit of a laugh where she just looks so miserable. It's it's so suffocating and awkwardness. And then she and then she that drives her to become a booze hound. 
And basically, I mean, this, it's clear that Phil is a jerk to her. And I mean, basically the moment she gets there, he's like, you're just a, what is, you're just a cheap scrounger. He says something to her like. She's like, hi, brother. And he's like, I ain't your brother. Like, he's just so. you're just a cheap, you know. Yeah. And which, so which I mean. think is is like I said, it's an it's an amazing scene because basically Phil kind of writes a letter to their parents trying to put the kibosh on this relationship, and it doesn't work. So he tries to be a little devious once, but that's all he can do. Because if he really wanted to inflict maximum pain, he would do what another character does later and be devious, right? Yeah, yeah. But he's not. De- he can't be devious for very long. He's so angry and sad yeah. that he just comes on straight and tells you, "I think you're a gold digger." I mean, that's not the words he used, but that's essentially what yeah. he says. And she almost immediately becomes really deeply depressed and alcoholic. And I thought that they really took her there quick. Yeah, she does great acting and she sells it in terms of the experience of it, but. I do think, but once again, I, I, I think that, you know, she does have a line where she says he's just a man like other men. I mean, I, I think we see her as being on the edge even when she gets there. Yes. So yes. she already is a pretty grim person. We learn that her ex-husband... Was a doctor and he killed himself. Yeah. So... I, I, you know, I, I, as I think about it, I can get there on it, but it was a little like I just thought she got really miserable really quick, yeah. in a way that I thought they could have maybe Finesse dribbled just out a, a little, little bit, more, yeah. as opposed to have her just go immediately to like yeah, this maximum movie's not excep- depression. Yeah, this movie's not exceptionally long. Like it's actually shorter than most of the movies we've been seeing. Yes, yes. so I actually feel but you, you wouldn't you, even have to make the movie longer. You would have just had her. Her escalate yeah, to that the escalation place could have a been a little more gradually because literally, like she has this uncomfortable scene where she she's supposed to play the piano and she 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 chokes and she's been we know she's a teetotaler because she gets angry when people drink at her restaurant back when she's a restaurateur and an innkeeper and then she immediately like just chugs some booze and that's it she's off to the races she's extremely depressed she's, she's hiding she's liquor a, everywhere she's a hundred percent yeah she's your classic booze hound right she's got bottles stashed all over yeah and i just thought that happened that happened very fast for me although i mean uh the jesse Plemons does admirable work being like the least inspiring husband a person could have yes, in that circumstance he really is he really is. I mean, there's there's just a butt-clenchingly awkward exchange between him and Phil where it takes him, like, what seems like a, an eon in film time to ask Phil to clean to, up to clean, for this take a thing. bath. It's just like, please take a bath. Because I mean, he, that's a really And you're watching is. the movie thinking he's, gonna, thinking he's gonna say, like, stop being an asshole to my wife, yeah. you piece of shit. Right? Why are you no. being such a dick? Like that's what you're expecting, or that's that's what I'm expecting. No, no, I like, was. That's expecting, what everybody is. Ex- I, you're sitting there thinking, oh, he's going to finally confront him about, about his wife, him being yeah. a creepy asshole to his new wife, and so it's like. But he's not concerned about his wife. Could you? Yeah, he he. It's very. I mean, he I mean, wants, the, he wants it as sort of a. She, I mean, she, the she, love triangle of the movie excludes him. The love triangle yeah. of the movie is the son, Phil, and, and the, mother, and the mother. Yes, and it's really like. Hate between Phil and the mother, and then lo- the the two of them, like how the, the how Pete the son relates to the two of them, and yeah. how he makes a decision, and the decision that he makes is pretty compelling. Given that, at least one thing I took from the end of the movie is that he he did like Phil, like he there he was sad in the sense that he did he had to do what he did. He, like, uh, Peter says a little prayer. Yeah, he says a little prayer for Phil. So, th- th- so let's get into Peter because I think he's an incredibly complicated character. Because I mean, he he's a he's a sociopath. He is a sociopath. He is Anthony Perkins in Psycho. Yeah, he's a so yes, absolutely very heavy psycho vibes from yes. him. He's doing it for his mother. He's doing. I mean, this is spoiler time. He's doing murders for his mother. Yeah. He's taking it. He takes him out. How and again, how the you're in you're, a very brilliant and intricate and. This was one of those movies where I, right when he plunges his hands into the water, it unfolded for me. Yes. Yeah. I, I, it was it the should. perfect moment. Because I remember there's the scene where he goes out and he, 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 he skins the anthrax cow. 
and uh, not the band, but the disease. No, no. So, but but the, uh, to reinforce like, something oh, you well, said, to, to reinforce something you said, how they dole out the information and the 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 alcoholism of Rose, it's a little rush for this death and for this for this murder that he orchestrates in his mind is one of the most slowly meticulously designed ones i think in cinema history and, and, and he is meticulous and He's how, a meticulous dude and how they dole out the information because it's all fragmented it's all separated i, I he really com- love that character he, he doesn't want a carrot. He doesn't want a carrot. <laughs> Basically, he, 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 he brings home a rabbit and dissects it. And the, the, but one it, of the, but one it's, of more, the, it's worse than that. He brings home a rabbit, gives it to his mother they, like, to like, comfort her, they cuddle. cuddle and then she, uh, Thomas and Mackenzie, who's just in Last Night in Soho, she plays one of the maids. She's like, I want to see the rabbit, rabbit. And uh, she doesn't speak English very well, apparently. But uh, they, uh, she goes up. She wants to. And she goes. I have a carrot for the rabbit. And he goes. He doesn't want a carrot. And it's because he's dead. He's, he's split he's, open, he's, and he's being he's, uh, being probably he probably vivisected <laughs> it. He probably didn't even dissect. He probably vivisected, vivisected it. Yeah. Right. Ooh. I mean, it is. It's great. It's I mean, so, it's such a great. As soon as that happened, like, the, like in just the way it's shot, because because yeah. you you see her react, and then you get the reveal. Yes. It's like boom, boom great just great filmmaking just yes. on a technical level but also just like just a real great i love i would love like, that's hilarious Fantastic. That's really good. <laughs> as soon as that happened i knew phil was going to die by wow, Peter's see, hands. You, you, i didn't i didn't I, know uh, how I, I didn't know how i i still thought they might fuck like that's the thing oh no i i, I you thought I, they'd fuck then kill fuck then kill okay uh, no, interesting no, so, so interesting the, 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 once that happened i, I thought knew, they were gonna fuck i knew he was sociopathic that enough that killing phil was going to be just as easy you, as killing you that know, i'm bad at predicting movies because the truth is what's going to happen is is telegraphed in the very first moment of the movie. Where oh, there's yes. a quick voiceover where he says, I, I wanted my mother to be happy. I mean, I need... that's Isn't that right? Isn't that important for me to make sure that my mother's, my mother's happy? happy? Yeah. So, I mean, it's telegraphed in the first moment of the movie, but I didn't get it until the yeah. hands plunged. Well, no... It, I, th- I mean, I thought that... But that's the thing is... So, so, I mean, the way that the movie is progressing in the first half of it, you think we're heading towards a crisis of conflict. Right, but then, quite brilliantly, like, and you started to say this, and I cut you off. Like, no. the movie takes a right turn, or maybe a left turn, and it becomes a a kind of love story. Like a broke back mountain. Yeah, it, between but like feeling, and yeah. even then, you like, and then I find myself thinking, oh, Phil's gonna do something bad to Peter to get at the mother, mm-hmm. right? And there is ambiguity because I think you do wonder, like, does Phil really like... Like, I think if I had to guess, and like I said, this is what makes the movie great is it doesn't tell you, but you can think about it. I think Phil starts out probably planning to do something bad to him to get at her and then actually starts really liking him. So this is the thing. Like, that, that scene, and it's a wonderful scene, is they arrive, it's old, they're out in, like, somewhere having, like, a picnic and all the men are there and uh, Rose, George... Peter arrive and Peter walks almost as he's walking down like uh you know he's a modeling strip on the catwalk yeah, yeah. on the catwalk and he walks oh, down and he's it's he's not it's not cat calls they're they're calling him faggot they're calling him all these yeah, sorts no, they, of names. they are not they are not kind they're not me. kind but he's unfazed he walks and he walks back unfazed doesn't react and this is the interesting thing then there's a conversation with Phil and Peter, and as you as you noted, Phil, I think finds that whether or not it's impressive, but I think he's like, here's my next target for whatever he's conniving yes. uh, about tormenting Rose. I'm going to go with the son. Yeah, and at the same moment, Peter recognizes what he's trying to do and says, and and then he always called him sir. He always called, him, and he goes, no, tell me more, Phil. Phil. Yes. At the same yeah. time, no, they he, have he, both made he, the decision. He, but, but but it's funny, right? Because it is about like if by strength we mean sort of strength of will, right? Which is the great, the prized virtue of the Western hero, right? Is the classic idea of power. Yeah. That you can make your will real, 
Yes. Right? So once again, we're not talking about moral virtues here, at least not in the modern sense. No. We're talking about characteristics, right, that were valued. The ability to conceive of and bring to fruition difficult goals, right? Yes. And so the question here is, who is the hero in that sense, in that yeah. classical sense? And it's a battle of will, right? And the one who has the will to see the thing through is Peter. Is Peter. He's yeah. the one who has who... the will to to do the thing, yes. right? To that That is, because that's what makes a hero in these worlds is you're the person who's willing to do the thing that other people will not do because it's too nasty, it's too dirty, it's too shitty, right? Like, like the, the Western hero is someone who goes out and who kills people and does violence and does the shit that you or I won't do because they are big enough for the moment, right? Yeah. And they can rise to the level of the moment, which requires, and that's why Westerns war are very similar, right? Which requires them to kind of do things that in other contexts we would regard as evil. Yes. Yeah. Right? And so it's interesting because we Peter, might we might even in that context regard as evil. I'm not yeah. I'm not trying I don't I'm not saying I buy into that mythology, but that is the mythology. Yes. Greatness is the ability to do the thing that other people will can't it do. will it into existence is like, absolutely can you that. kill another person? Yeah. Forget about being willing to die. Are you willing to kill? Yeah. Right? That's the question. That takes you know, once 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 I mean, we can all think about it, right? But when you really got to do it, some, you know, it, it takes a certain kind of person, yeah. right? Yeah. And Peter, Peter, it becomes, it's interesting because, as you said, Phil is the modern man at one time of history. But Phil, uh, uh, Peter is now the new modern man, a man of science, sociopathic tendencies. And so I found it an eerie commentary about what kind of man can eliminate the past or eliminate what the, is tormenting people and what what that will that you're describing is required to do so and i i don't think it's i i think that it has a powerful sort of symbolism in that the next century was going to be filtered with a lot of people like like peter of scientific mind to justify well, yeah, I mean, who, who, incredible who, horrors. Who made the bomb? Right? Yeah, exactly. Who made I, the bomb? You, you, see, you like, see an Oppenheimer kind of yeah, like yeah. And I, mean, that, and I mean, we're talking about 1925. Yeah. Yes, the rise of the rise of the predominance of science in particular, yes. Yeah, to... to Although I, actually it was physical science before biological yeah, science, which yeah. kind of lagged behind. But but it's still, but it's, yes. it, it is that use of the intellectual and the, the emergence of sci scientific explanation for horror uh, yes. and tragedy. Yes, well, he has a principle. He does. Right. He has a principle, which is that he needs to protect his mother. That is a moral principle that he embraces. And it justifies killing a person, murdering someone. I mean, murder. It certainly does. Own. There's no yeah. question, right? Yeah. Uh, cold blooded murder, first degree murder, premeditated, malice of forethought, right? All those standards. So, you know, yes, I do think, I do, and like, and it's so cold and it's so calculated, yeah. which is the thing that Phil can't be, right? Like I said earlier, he tries for a second, yeah, but he can't do it. He can't keep it up. Yeah, He can only sort of follow his kind of corrupted, repressed id into <laughs> sort of, you know... Menace. Me yeah, yeah, being just generally kind of menacing. And then he sort of, his erotic desire kind of collides with some... Maybe some half baked plan to get at Rose through her kid, right? Whatever. But it doesn't work. It doesn't matter. And ultimately, whatever he embarks on it to, like, whatever his initial plan is, it's pretty clear he's like, he, he ends up falling for Peter. Yes. Yeah. And I, I believe that, I do believe that, like, Peter is like attracted to Phil too. I mean, uh, there, I think... there is an. I mean, obviously, there's this ambiguity and this sensualness, like where he, how how that scene is done, where he is 
he's a, he knows he's killing him with with the rawhide in the water. He's poisoned this water. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's but done. but and yet there are these. Lo- it's it's played out as a sensual scene between the two. Oh yeah. It is. It is a fascinating display. If you have a fetish for sharing cigarettes, <laughs> you will never see a movie that is more for you. Yeah, no, that's funny. Um, I thought we've talked very well about this movie. Uh, I, I don't. I, I think we could talk more, but no, I, I feel good about it. I yeah. feel good about. It. I think this is. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I do have a couple little caveats, particularly about the Rose character. I, know, I, I think th- those are fair. Who I think, but like as a as a cinematic experience. I mean, you've got some great performances. You've got some of the best cinematography I've seen in yeah. In a I mean, long ju- just time. the language, uh, the dynamic of the battling banjo and piano, where the camera keeps great moving, scene. and it, it's just, it's just the anxiety that is in these sequences. But like I said, even the ability so well. to like show, like I'm a sucker for these kind of western landscapes, right? Your mileage yeah. may vary. Uh, they're very evocative, but then the ranch feels like very real and very lived in, and yeah. and it has a kind of like like people don't talk about this in the context of movies that aren't like science fiction or fantasy but the world building of it like it feels very the world feels very for a movie that's sparse that doesn't have a ton of dialogue that has a lot of openness and emptiness to it 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 feels the world feels very fully realized absolutely and feels real yeah and and the kind of going inside and outside, because you know, like the house is like the ranch and the house and and Montana slash New Zealand are very big characters in this movie. They right? are, yeah. They, 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 it's funny because the house reminded me of like Magnificent Ambersons, right? Like, yeah, the yeah. The house is very Magnificent Ambersons inside, like the decor of it. Yeah. And then it's like this kind of what it's like in the house versus outside the house and how oppressive it sometimes feels in the house. It's very, uh, yeah. like, like just just technically just brilliant filmmaking and yeah. and real gripping stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I highly recommend. Highly recommend. I really, really hope this gets as much awards attention as it deserves because sometimes that does not happen. But Well, uh, I mean, I, I do think that... Um, they're gonna want to nominate female directors. I mean, that's well, I think, and, and honestly, I think there's pressure there. Two of the and best movies this year I've seen have been female filmmakers. Bergman Island is Mia Hansen Love, and uh, and this. I mean, Power of the Dog is exceptional, and I really hope that they do get nominated. But you know, I I, I think this one has more of a chance than Bergman Island. Yeah, but uh, but, but uh, so. I, I I think there is there is pressure there, and that's good. And yeah, there should be absolutely because well, this is uh, this is a. Uh, a late career masterpiece from a from an iconic filmmaker. Absolutely. Right? I mean, this, I, I this... don't know how you could uh, overlook it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if the Netflix things matters or not. I feel like it has to still matter. Not less anymore. This year I don't think cause, anymore. Well, it's because I mean, nobody's going to the theater anyway. Anyways, I mean, here here are some people are because it's fucking L.A. But yeah, yeah, but it I, is sort of a dead thing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's it's there's so many. You're more on top of the stuff than I am. I mean, I, I'm sure we'll do a, some year end and some Oscar type stuff when yeah. the time rolls around. I sure I can't imagine that this movie won't get some serious consideration. But I really I, I've been wrong before. Yeah, well, I genuinely hope because I th- I think some sometimes you get the the rumblings of movies such as like Belfast, and you're like, well, I don't think it necessarily deserves it. This one does. This one is a masterwork. It yeah, deserves. Yeah, I mean, recognition. Netflix got a lot of juice. They got a lot of money to do whatever sort of weird. I mean, the Oscar campaign. I mean, I know that it's kind of you gotta get out on the trail, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You've got to appeal to this yeah. very small audience of Academy members, yeah. Yeah. who have, uh, shall we say, how would I put this? Um, uh, their demographics do not reflect <laughs> no any population in particular. No. None. No population. Uh, a lot of old white guys. They've, I know they've done a little work to change that, but. I don't know. I mean, this seems kind of the movie old white guys might like. So yeah. I don't know. For I mean, I'm an I'm an old I'm, a, be... I'm an older white guy, and I like, uh, uh, but I like westerns. I love yeah, a good western. Yeah, like, yeah, the, and this is a this great is, revision. Yeah, this western. definitely enters into like the unforgiven kind of. Yeah. Like you know, I'm trying to think. I guess there will be blood. Is kind of a, a great. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, absolutely. A movie that Assassination of I... Jesse James with a cover up before. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is definitely the, goes into that. Category. Some of the best 
films of the last uh, two decades have been westerns, and I, I, I think it's because of the rich history and implications that genre has for America. But I, I think for cinema, obviously, because the the first narrative feature uh, for uh, in America was the Great Train Robbery. So, I mean, you almost can't separate it. So I, th- I think that that great long history of the Western gives such impact. And when you when you subvert it, I mean, this is a transgressive work. And so that this is a, a fascinating piece. And I think they utilize oh, yeah. the genre and it's, it's totality. Well I, th- well, I think it gives you a couple things, right? I mean, just visually, it gives you a lot of exciting opportunities. I don't think we can discount that right yeah you could just make you can do a lot of very evocative things in these landscapes right uh i but yes i mean this this shit is deep in the american vein westward expansion the frontier kind of i mean america is the way that america is because we went west right yes absolutely like that's there's so much is i mean everything from the mythology the cowboy to like I mean, this, the, what ultimately triggered the Civil War, right, was a fight over who, what's, as we expanded, what states would... Have you know, slaves how, versus... How, yeah, yeah. A, how would we handle the question of slave versus free states, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's it's absolutely, you know, Lewis and Clark. I mean, you can go on and yeah. on, just like so deep in the marrow of... Yeah, and the philosophy. America, yeah. right? Yeah. And kind of who we are and how we see ourselves. So yeah, I, I agree with you. It's not surprising that that's been a, a fertile canvas, especially when you have the. And I mean, you know, like I said, even I mean, I mean, we talked about the Searchers. I mean, that that's a movie that has even then sort of interesting implications. And then you have further it away its career. I mean, we'll think about the Shootist for crying. Yeah, out loud. absolutely. Like, like so, I mean, this is these ideas of even the revisionism are sort of, you know, I mean, fuck Peck and Paw, right? I mean, like you could go on and on, but I mean. You know, there's there's a, clearly a lot of um, a lot of fertile territory in the West, yeah. and I'm glad that it's <laughs> a lot of fertile. Yeah, territory. and I'm glad it's being taken up and still happening because uh, yeah. obviously this was a great use of it. Yeah. Um. Well, this was great. We've done two this week, Ben. Boom. Success. Yeah. High five. Yeah. Uh, subscribe, like. I'm I'm too tired. I can't even. I, I'm so subscribe, worn out by like, talking yeah. about such a such a evocative movie we're gonna try and do two for next week as well but we're, we're gonna talk about it and figure out our schedule yeah, we'll, we'll, you, there'll be more talking yeah we're, we're gonna we, there do, will be talk there will be talk uh, I, I mean up on the agenda we're doing house of gucci i imagine and kanto i mean that's one you can take your daughter to we so. are we're going to see it on wednesday that's we're going to see it day before uh day before thanksgiving yeah that's awesome she's fired up good i mean it looks fun Looks fun. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm a sucker. But yeah, we, I'm sure I'll, I'm sure I like it. Um, and then we got Licorice Pizza, um, yeah, which uh, comes out Sanderson. Friday uh, at at the Westwood Regency in seventy millimeter. Uh, so I'm I'm seeing it Sunday, but uh, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. see about we'll, what, see, we'll see when I go see. Yeah, it. we'll see we'll, when I, I, I never know when. I'm and then there's there's there might be the humans drive my car. We'll figure it out, but uh, definitely House of Gucci and Encanto. And probably those two we'll do next, uh, just because I imagine we'll have seen those uh, by by yes. by the time we can record. Yes. But uh, yeah, awesome. Uh, I know movies and you don't with Kyle Brule. You can go venture that Patreon uh, Dead Reckoner with Ben Thalen. You can go venture that. Uh, thank you for joining us. See you right next on. week. Be well.